<coughs> Alrighty, so today I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover video, a little bit of a different style. Uh, but we're going to go back to Fedora on an old computer. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you might notice that Fedora 34 has been released. So the last uh, video I made was Fedora 33 LX Cute on a uh, on this older computer, uh, AMD Athlon single core um, DDR 199 megahertz RAM. Um, yeah, and uh, so this time we're going to go through, we're going to do Fedora 34. So let's hop in. And um, we're actually going to do Fedora 34 i3, which is a brand new spin. Uh, I'm going to bypass the login. I'm, I have some problems with this computer, or the, the boot up, rather. I have some problems with this computer in terms of uh, this kind of weird error message that spams. Uh, pulls a bunch of, like, a uh, kernel uh, worker. K worker processes and like so you gotta I gotta cut it out with a script or whatever. I'm gonna show you here with this, but uh that's my little problem. So I can't show you a boot on this computer with any kind of reasonable expectation of speed or whatever. It'll be a, probably a lot faster for for you. And it's gonna all work uh out of the box a little smoother for you. But I have my computer all set up here, and so I'm gonna show you a couple things. This is a little bit more of a distro review than in the last one was. Uh, because I guess I kind of have a lot more to say about this distro. It's a lot more interesting. Um, but I'm also going to show you some stuff like video playback. Uh, so, you know, we got some video playing here. I think that this is at like 240, and I'm going to bump it up to 480p. Uh, but, you know, I, I wasn't super psyched on, like, uh, the performance necessarily that I got out of this, uh, this distro. Uh, I, you know, I... It, Feels like maybe I, I got a little bit more speed out of the last one, or I got a little bit more consistency. Uh, but you know, overall, I, I don't think that it's it's really faster or slower. It's probably just in my head. Uh, so you know, let's go over a couple of things about the desktop. Uh, you might notice that uh, the terminal is kind of weird. I mean, I don't think I see most terminals coming with a paper white uh, background. And uh, that's that's how that has to do with with the way that Fedora deals with uh, window managers and uh, and desktop uh, environments in general. Uh, Fedora is known for doing very vanilla takes uh, and, and really just not trying to do too much more than uh, share what the original developer's intent was. So uh, ultimately, it, it's going to have a lot less of the added features that something like an Ubuntu or Manjaro or something like that's going to have, uh, where they're trying to give you a full package suite. Uh, very rarely are they going to give you any extra packages you didn't ask for in Fedora. Uh, and they, they do that based on the uh, window manager or desktop environment. So here's a little bit more on my specifics. The, the GPU is actually an integrated graphics chip. Uh, so don't get too, too concerned about that. There's not much extra horsepower there. Uh, four gigs of RAM, and right now it's running in, I think, well, about a gig with a, with a browser open. It's not awful. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot better than most other computers, uh, most other distributions are going to have. But uh, yeah, so they're, they're very much on the vanilla install here, and that's why I've never seen any other instance of a distribution using uh, th this, this, like, white background for the i3 uh, sensible terminal. It but all the, all the Fedora distributions, if you install i3, they're going to come like this. So uh, what I'm actually showing you right now is I'm, I'm showing you that. So um, the back end of Fedora or of this i3 spin is, is really interesting. Uh, they do include a couple XFCE utilities here for things like changing your appearance or changing your uh, desktop uh, resolution. But if you notice uh, it's not doing anything. I changed it to a dark theme. There's no, you know, I closed it. I, I tried reopening it. You know, there's, it's, um, thought maybe it just was, you know, whatever. Maybe it just wasn't going to affect the program that I had available. But the reality is that they're not hooked up. Uh, I actually was like, okay, fine. Well, let's just use XRander then. And I had to manually install XRander. XRander doesn't come with this, uh, with this spin. 
So they really don't add anything extra. If you want to use X Mesa, if you want to use a different backend, you don't even want to use X11. You probably, you know, not X11, but if you if you if you were trying to to do something something weird, you could uh, you can make whatever changes and adjustments you want. So yeah, uh, that that's kind of the theme for this. Is there is like one GUI program installed, and that's uh, Firefox. So it comes with Firefox, which is a little bit of a, of a heavier browser than I would want for a lighter distro. But again, i3 is not really intended to be uh, light for the sake of being light. It's it's light for the sake of doing power uh, power computing, right? It's for people who want to, you know, are probably doing a lot of programming, a lot of high high power, high resource intensive stuff, and, and they don't want a desktop environment that's going to get in the way. They just want to, you know do their own thing. So you can see here, did not change the configuration at all. Even though I changed the uh, I changed the resolution, it, it doesn't make any of the changes itself. So they, they're clearly just not connected to whatever you need to set them up yourself. Because um, that's what i3 is all about. It doesn't make a great live ISO, to be honest, because i3 is a place that should be home for you. It's something you kind of build yourself and you build based on each use case. I mean, even though I tra my transfer a config file from computer to computer, I'm going to uh, adjust that config file to work best for that computer. Uh, so on the theme of uh, old computers running new Fedora uh, or new new Linux operating systems, this is uh, of like a 13 or 14 year old um, MacBook Pro. This is an early 2008, right before they changed to the modern unibody. Uh, design so nice little throwback dual core uh, Intel CPU dedicated graphics card um, it's an Nvidia graphics card or something it's it's really not a bad older system let me get a little a little uh, preview of, of, of the of your first uh, first boot into the i3 window manager it gives you all the same little config you know options you want to make a config file do you want to you know, you can put your own config file in there, or you can uh, choose which uh, which key you want to be, like your super key or whatever. Uh, which I actually found it all is kind of convenient because not every not every keyboard has two Windows keys, and I like having a left and a right. Uh, again, I also I I really, I really actually kind of hate this white terminal. It's so bright, and I just don't do bright. I I, I do a lot more dark uh, dark theme stuff. So I, I would probably. Either you know make a couple of changes here, but I probably just install uh, Alacrity. I don't think that most people use the i3 sensible terminal, but it's there. It exists if you want. Uh, so that's Firefox opening up. That's way faster than Firefox was opening up in the last computer. So I didn't even bother showing it to you. But uh, yeah, you know Firefox did open. It opened in the last computer. It take its time. It's an older PC. It's crazy though. What two years and uh, an extra core and some graphics help does. Uh, for a computer, however, so again, numbers to show you here. Uh, it's not a lot of graphics intensive programs, not a lot of GUI programs. So I mean, most of uh, this spin you could probably just run out of the TTY uh, if you wanted. Right here we go. We can you can scrub everything. Scrubs pretty pretty smooth. I think I might have. Uh, actually, I haven't made any changes on this one, so everything scrubs reasonably well. And in the last video you might have noticed, or last portion of this video you might have noticed that I needed to make the window really small, or the video screen really small. That's why I had a terminal up the entire time and resized that way. Uh, otherwise, you know, the the video just wasn't going to play back. You really have you're limited to very small resolutions. Think early YouTube resolutions. You know, one one forty four to eighty. I don't know, whatever to something two forty. Um. But uh, yeah, so now now this is working so much better, so much better. I hate that picture and picture feature, by the way. It's like it really is just not convenient for me. I'm sure some people like it. I hate it myself. Uh, here's again my favorite YouTuber, or one of my favorite YouTubers, the Almighty Anthony. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, so this video is playing back really, really well. Um, it's playing back fine. I mean, and you can play 1080p, even though this monitor doesn't support 1080p. Uh, if you had an external monitor, it, it would. And I think you could probably even use a little bit of less resources if you went in and installed some of the non-free codecs and stuff that, that can, uh, you know, increase the 
power of your computer, even if it might also increase your uh, or decrease your your uh, cool street cred. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's just, just that's just good playback. You know, that video playback works great, and this is a thirteen, fourteen year old computer uh, running with. Uh, the newest version of Linux, so the latest in Linux technology at your fingertips. Uh, you know, even though, even though this computer is aging and falling apart, and I have to use Barrier for it, to, you know, because the keyboard's not working and all that. I mean, it's still a useful computer, and it still runs really nicely. Um, pretty exciting, actually. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's again, that's why kind of all I can show you on these distributions uh, or on these PCs. This distribution is incredibly like uh, it's, it's lacking in in a lot of graphic functionality uh, until you give it that. So yeah, I mean, this is just me in the D menu, just kind of showing like that you know most everything that's already baked in is kind of command line oriented, uh, and they they really expect that you're gonna either just be in the command line all the time or that you're going to want to be very specific about the programs that you install which is it's normal it's, just, it's pretty reasonable for the the type of person that uses i3 on a regular basis there are there are more convenient tiling window managers out there if what you wanted was convenient um, this is for people who like to spend hours hacking their config files um, which is me i i spend a lot of time hacking config files for no reason uh <laughs> for, for my own my own fun and enthusiasm um yeah and i think i'm gonna switch over in a second to my other to the third bonus footage here but i guess i'm still still playing around yeah you know so i mean Again, i3 is, is not really meant to be light for the sake of being light, so not the same way that LXQT is kind of really intended to be a light desktop environment. So I did run into some quirks and some problems, um, some some little issues here and there with this, this spin. It wasn't quite as like perfect as uh, as like the LXQT spin has been in my experience. I really I really felt uh, I had a lot of I really I really really enjoyed uh, the way that the uh, LXQT spin works and honestly if, if I was going to do this I probably would stick to just putting i3 over the LXQT desktop environment because I don't need to set all these things up in the back end I don't have any particular preference in that at this point in my Linux experience and in the future I might have that that yearning but for right now I mean I think it uses about the same amount of RAM as just if, if not even a little bit more than just running i3 over top of LXQT or LXQ rather. Uh, and ultimately, you're probably going to have to add more headroom anyways because if you're going to start connecting things and adding daemons to this i3 spin, it's going to be more uh, heavier than it's just kind of coming out of the box. This isn't like a normal spin where what you get you can pretty much use to do a task. Um, Again, so this is this is this is the last little bonus footage. I, I didn't get very far because I couldn't get the the internet to work or the Wi-Fi to work. Rather, the Wi-Fi wouldn't work. This is, there's no um, uh, Ethernet cable here, but this is a little netbook uh, two and one. This, this one's about six years old, so it's got a little Atom processor and uh, you know the integrated Intel graphics or whatever. And uh, yeah, here we go. It's running. I, I'm not going to show you too much. But this is actually running at a lot less RAM, and I'm not really sure why it was doing that but yeah i was running in a lot less ram um and again i couldn't i couldn't get the internet to work on it so that's kind of not super useful but yeah uh you know uh thanks for hanging out and checking out this video and you know maybe i'll see you again uh for some other stupid adventures in old computing and linux bye all